Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's video. Today's video will be in a different format than I have done before and I will explain why. Uh, right here I have a 2008 BMW 525i I believe. Yes, no 528i and it just got delivered uh, about an hour ago or so. I bought it from Copart in Seattle. This is what the car looks like. So the winning bid was $1,900. After fees, I paid $2,338 for this car. It's a 2008 with 107,000 miles almost. So when you buy a car from Copar, at least in our area, they will put mileage on the front door. I believe that's probably the lot number. They usually have a sticker instead of that, which this one doesn't have. Um, I think I grabbed the key. I feel like every single BMW I've been getting lately has a bad battery in here. Look at that, it closes, but it won't open. So let me get this thing open. Here we are. And this is what it looks like. So I haven't done anything to this car aside from park it up here. I saw that it has a check engine code, which we will diagnose right now. And I will pretty much go from there whether I will want to keep this car or not. fog lamp so first time I've opened this oh look at that some mats some jumper cables windshield washer fluid empty box which probably had some nice uh, tools in it some sunglasses open up this side <clears throat> okay seat moves so battery's pretty good uh, I don't know, maybe this button is broken to open it on the key fob. I'll show you guys the damage. I'll close this up. So usually what I do first uh, thing when I get the car is I get rid of the paint. So that's the damage right here. And from the pictures, I did not see that this was cracked. I already ordered cracked. But thank you, baby. Sophia does not allow us to say crap. So every time we say it, she keeps us in check, which is very good. Thank you, baby. Uh, so I bought the bumper, assuming everything was good. Uh, the bumper was 300 something dollars for this car. Badge is missing. I'll see if I can find one inside the trunk. Although I doubt it, because it seems like it cracked and broke. <clears throat> but with this new video format that I am going to try, um, I will upload this video once this car is complete or if I come to the conclusion of not fixing it and just dumping it onto the auction. And hopefully I will continue making these types of videos. Uh, but if all goes well and if I end up fixing this car and selling it completely fixed, then I will run down all the numbers uh, for everything that I purchased, you guys will see me working on this car. But first things first, like I said, I want to get rid of the paint on the windows. I'll show you guys what I use. I have been using this Turtle Wax label and sticker remover for the last three years. And I buy it at Walmart or online. Uh, eBay and Amazon both have them. I don't remember how much they are because it's been a while since I bought them. But this process is super simple shake the can spray the paint sometimes it takes two or three applications depending on the paint but i usually let it sit for maybe two three minutes and then with some kind of cloth i just wipe it off um, sometimes it'll kind of leave you know these uh, kind of greasier chemical stains on the window but going through a car wash which i usually do before i sell the car has always taken those off and the car looks very clean and nice well, this stuff is kind of, uh, I don't know, curing or doing its thing. I'm gonna see what the engine codes are. I have two engine scanners. One is this one, which is just a check engine reader. It doesn't really do much, uh, scans the codes and I uh, could reset them. The other one I have uh, will go through the whole system, airbag, suspension, electronics. So for something more or less simple, I always use this one because it's a lot easier to use. It's not as in depth and here all I'm trying to do is clear the codes. 
I started the car, it runs, uh, it's off, something is off. I'm thinking possibly spark plugs, maybe ignition coils, maybe there's a misfire. Don't know for sure yet, but we'll see what the codes show. Read codes, ambient air, temperature sensor, confirm this one is pending, and this is a permanent. So it looks like ambient air temperature sensor. Not sure what this means, high input and low input. Because uh, I don't really do a lot of BMWs, but I will go to Google and see what these are. And it seems like a sensor, which should be fairly easy to replace, as long as, you know, it's nothing super expensive. Took pictures of the codes on my phone, <clears throat> just so that I could do some research later. What I always do when I get a car is I clear the codes. As soon as I pull them, I clear the codes and then I'll start the car, maybe take it around the neighborhood, see if anything returns, just because sometimes they get stored. Here we see that one of the codes wasn't cleared. This is a permanent code. I'll see if my bigger, more serious uh, reader scanner tool will give me more details about it. But I will, uh, use Google right now and see what these codes mean. So you guys could see all these marks right here. Try it from this angle too. Uh, so this will get taken off from a car wash, but you can see paint didn't fully get taken off from the first try. Same thing here. That one did pretty well. So I'll spray a little bit more, give it another minute and wipe down again. I usually use uh, microfiber cloths like this. From the research I was able to do, it looks like this might be the culprit from the accident and as you can see from the damage it is all completely ripped apart so i'll need to figure out where these wires go not right now uh and i'll need to put them together and that should resolve my issue <clears throat> as long as you know, from Copart. Whoever else was looking at the car didn't clear any other codes because it does sound like this thing isn't running 100%. Don't think that this ambient sensor thing would cause it to do that. Or I might be reading into things, but I'm gonna open up the hood and take a look uh, at what's going on here. Looks very clean under here. For what it is, I don't think it was ever cleaned because you could see some heavier spots here. But yeah, some right there, some here. But yeah, it looks pretty clean for, uh, for what it is. Since this was already inside the trunk, might as well top it off and then get rid of this. I've bought uh, windshield wiper fluid before and I've poured it in, like half of it. And then I'd hear something running and I look underneath and everything that I just poured in was pouring out from underneath the car. Either a hose came off or the tank reservoir itself was completely busted and it was useless. Um, there's that. So what I'm gonna do now is clean out the trunk area, throw out, you know, things like this that I clearly will never use. And yeah, go through all of this stuff. Thankful that we have these, but pretty filthy in here. Let's get to work. Look at that. They're nice enough to leave a garbage bag in here. For someone who had cleaning wipes and interior cleaner, they didn't do a good job cleaning. Starting to clean the interior and try using this stuff, Meguiar's. It's supposed to work but honestly very disappointed with it I've never used it before um i've been using this stuff and this is absolutely amazing so i'll show you guys the difference by the way if you have some in your area stock up this is totally awesome and i agree okay watch so you see this whole black trim let me see if we could just take it off nope so we'll spray this and it says wipe off right away. Okay, almost nothing. So let me just make sure it's dry. 
and then this stuff. Sprayed it once. Look at that. Show you guys up top. Spray it. You don't even need to wait. Look at that. That's it. Love this stuff. And this is my last one. So I need to find more. So literally just spray down with this stuff. Grab your cloth. Look at that, much better already. You know, clearly these other spots I'll need to go through again, but already a noticeable difference. I think there's a clear difference between this and this right here. Let's say night and day. Just look at this difference so much better unfortunately the leather is pretty worn especially right here but I'm making pretty good progress with the interior clean I cleaned the top part of this door not the bottom I didn't touch that door at all I almost have all the parts to complete this car so originally I was thinking that this is the ambient air temperature sensor but it is not so the way I found out it's not is can't really see it on the camera and it's even hard to see it in person with the natural eye but there's a part number right here I put that into Google and this is the airbag sensor uh, which I was kind of thinking why would the air temperature sensor be off if everything looks like it's connected but like I showed you guys we still have these wires and I am pretty sure uh, this is where the ambient temperature sensor would go and it got completely torn off so I bought a new one on eBay uh, I think it was about 15 16 bucks I bought a new headlight don't remember how much that is but I think I will uh, run through the numbers at the end of this video so you guys will know. I got a new bumper, it came in, it's painted, and it's actually an M5 style bumper, so I hope it won't look too weird. Uh, it came with new uh, uh, fog lights, that's what they are, sorry. And it's painted and ready to go, so I think what I will do right now is replace the headlight because uh, the way BMW works is under here, it is very difficult to take out the headlight if you have the bumper on. So since I have the new headlight, might as well get it replaced. Here's the new headlight. And the way I bought it, I got it to match this, basically both of these barcodes. I followed these numbers and I believe they are identical if I did not make a mistake. So this should be a absolute direct fit for this car. So we're gonna start removing the old one and putting the new one in. Lucky me, grab the T30. And it is the perfect size. Love when that happens, I don't need to go back and forth. Oh, look at that, this bracket was broken. But I could have sold the car like that with the small, uh, I guess, breakage. I have a plastic welder, I could have fixed it up, but this is good. Absolutely, every car has its quirks and you best believe that BMW will too. So there's one more, which is a T20. Let me see if I could line it up good for you guys. Uh, it's held right here. So this part right here, I guess it clamps down. And there's some kind of bracket that goes underneath. So I'll remove that screw and the headlight should come out just like that uh let me put this headlight right here the one thing i did disconnect before i took out the screw is uh this pin connector and this is the bracket i was talking about it actually looks like it's broken for the headlight mount but it will work it's not a huge piece but well, could plastic weld it. What I will try to do, well, I'll actually replace these covers and then I'll connect the pin 
and turn on the headlight, make sure everything works on it before I commit to installing it all the way and screwing everything on. So I think I got some bad news. The halo rings do not work. See, they work here, but not on this headlight. So I'll see if maybe I didn't connect something back here or what's going on, but I'm assuming that's an issue. Every single BMW is fun, so uh, <laughs> I pulled off, uh, I think, I think this is the halo light bulb. Uh, just by judging from the connectors over here, it lives down here. Um, and it was not working, so I started the car and then I was kind of touching it and I guess the connection uh, became alive. So I'm gonna put it back together and then see if that actually fixed the halo headlight issue. I am slightly annoyed. Uh, so this is what basically gives light to the halo lights or angel lights. And this headlight, the wiring was so jacked up. Like all of this was stripped and then done with uh, electrical tape. But it was a terrible job, so I had to redo the wiring because it was shorting somewhere and not able to put the power to the halos. So I fixed that, I put it in, and this darn bracket is missing. Remember when I pulled off this one? It was broken? Yeah, same with this one. But the listing said all mounting brackets are there, not to count the one for this one is also broken so there's two broken tabs what the heck but just so you guys know what i'm talking about let me grab my flashlight these headlights so it, they slide into this bracket and then the bumper goes over here so without removing the bumper you cannot replace the headlights as far as i know maybe somebody on youtube has a better way but i also had a 7 series and we had to take off the bumper because the headlight had also like this plastic piece underneath and it was also held from the bottom so like i guess uh, a slight fyi for all of you but a slight update for you guys since uh kind of working on the car right now if you guys remember i don't know if i showed it in the video but when i got the car and i started it the engine had a ticking knocking sound <clears throat> and i thought the car had a rod knock and it's kind of worried about it stressing more or less but few days after I got the car, uh, I was thinking, you know, what am I gonna do? Do I need to buy parts? Do I need to take it to a mechanic? And I was going to take it to my mechanic who has done a few cars for me now. Really, really, really awesome dude. Uh, and I started the car and I was like, hey, I'm gonna let it run five, 10 minutes, just see what happens. If it has a rod knock, I mean, I can't save it and really kind of running the engine won't harm it. But after running, for maybe six, seven minutes, it got quieter, quieter, and quieter. And now, I don't hear any ticking aside from the, you know, fuel injectors, which is normal. This thing is running extremely well. I drove it around the neighborhood. It runs really, really great. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna let it maybe cool off a little bit, and then I need to wash all of this stuff off. So the grease kind of right here, all this dirt and whatnot, just to make it a little bit cleaner, more presentable. Just like that, in a split second for you guys, the new sensor is here and I have the wiring for it. So we are continuing to work on this car. See if I could get this figured out and be connected. Um, and we will go from there. But still haven't in cleaned the engine bay, so I'll do that. I still haven't replaced the bumper which I will do that. I have some I have some logic behind this, but to be honest, guys, I'm kind of uh, trying plug and play type of idea and see if it works. So my logic behind this is, uh, you see the red right here? That will be the positive and this brown will be the negative. And on this end, since there are literally no instructions, I will do black as the negative and white as the positive. This is what that looks like. I am going to leave it as is since they are not touching. Put the sensor up here 
and let's get the car started. What I am looking for here is, uh, boy, I didn't have that light on or that one. So what I'm looking for here is before, without the sensor, it would show a snowflake here, which was the clear sign that something is off. It doesn't look like it's here. So I am going to connect my computer. Hey, there we go, 83 degrees. Look at that, guys. Got it fixed. So I'm gonna get the onboard uh, computer or connect it to the onboard computer and uh, turn off the check engine light, see if it comes back. And hopefully this fixed the issue. And I'm using my simple scanner. So all we need to do is just clear that code. And I used it on this car last, that's why I didn't have to auto scan it. I just used the previous one. There we go. Uh, well, I don't need to read the code, I'll just clear it because there was only one code. The car is running. Command sent, but the check engine light is not off. So, the next step, since I do think I fixed the issue, is continue on with the bumper, get the engine bay cleaned up, and uh, drive it, and see if it will turn off on its own. If not, then we'll get the big guns out and try that method. Can't leave the connections open-ended like that, so I put some electrical tape around them, uh, bundled up the wires, and got a zip tie around them. Not sure where to place this sensor, uh, so I think for now I'll let it be. I'll take off the bumper, um, see if it goes kind of further over here, or maybe find a better position for it. But I think now we can safely start removing the front bumper and putting on the new one. Show you guys a quick look around of the new bumper, what it looks like. M5 style bumper was not painted on the back right here, just the front, that's all I need. So by the looks of it, there are three points that I need to uh, work on to get this thing removed. The size is an eight millimeter. There's the first one. The bottom one has already been removed sure by who but we'll place that actually right here and then this top one is also at eight millimeter awesome so we got that removed uh, it's still being held up somewhere at the bottom well, maybe not I guess I could start working around here these usually just pull up yes back actually there's this top bracket just gently pull on after you remove these set that to the side and it looks like we have a few screws to remove and I'm assuming they will be a t20 my guess was incorrect it's a t30 but I was close so I'll remove all of these and see if the bumper will come right off and here is the old bumper, busted on that side. So I tried messing with these a little bit. If you're ever thinking about stealing these, good luck. This is uh, difficult to take out, but I think I will take it easy and clip by clip, try to pop these grills out. Let me actually see if my new bumper came with some. It did not, so have to take it out. And I apologize for the terrible lighting it is finally feeling like summer here. Here's baby Chloe. Hi, baby. Hi. Yeah. That's right. You ready to talk? Yeah. Heck of blue eyes on this one. Which all of our kids have blue eyes, but, um, Here's one of the grills in. And they sent me the lower part. I have the brackets for the bumper fog lights and I have new fog lights. So the only thing it did not come with was 
uh, the kidney grills that go right here. I feel like a pro. Look at this awesome system. So I'll be doing this side now. And they were nice enough to pretty much give me everything I need. So this one goes from the outside and then it's held by a bolt here, bolt here, little screws. And then one screw here, one screw here. And then you put these brackets on. Take this film off, so satisfying. Set that to the side. And so this is the bottom end. Not bottom, sorry, flat end. Which means it's going up like this. Well, first, slide it in like that. And again, guys, I'm sorry, I don't know how the lighting will be on this. There we go. Two more screws in here. And the fog lamps are in. Well, ladies and gentlemen, got it installed. But as you can see, it is not a good fit. So this doesn't align properly. This right here is off. And I mean, you could see that it's pretty much in line. And this a massive gap. Um, this side is, I would say, perfect. But then this side is not perfect. So, so it happens when you get aftermarket bumpers. I messaged the seller. We'll see what will happen. Um, but for now, I will finish it up um, and actually start driving it. See if that check engine light goes away and get it all cleaned up, look nice, maybe get it photographed, and then we will go from there with the bumper. But I'm gonna put in these bolts screws um, then this bracket will go on top right here and then these rubber pieces will go around oh I don't want to drop that like so and I think I will clean up the engine bay a little bit got my glove on got the professional sprayer not nah. uh, but this is a simple green solution and it's good for all-purpose cleaning it's good for grease removal, oil stains and whatnot. So the last few cars where the engine bay was somewhat dirty, this is what I've been using. And I basically just spray it all over. And then I have a scrubber. It's like a wheel cleaner type of deal. And I go through the car. And then I just rinse it off and with a vacuum, I blow dry it. <clears throat> so this won't work very well right now because it is pretty warm out and I'm not doing it quickly enough. So I'll have to use the hose and repeat this process a few times to get it to where I want it to be. Hi, Noah. I think it looks much better already. Clearly, I'm not putting any, you know, oils or whatever on it to make it look all shiny, but it is clean. A lot cleaner than it was before. So I think next step is take it through a car wash because the outside is super dirty. See if the check engine light goes away. Take pictures of it. And if the check engine light goes away, I will list it for sale as is with the bumper and go from there. Guys, the car is ready. I look like a mess, because I am a mess. Um, but I just started the car to go to the car wash and the check engine light is not on. Uh, the 
light that came on a little bit earlier. So that's for the fog lamp. And I realized when I was putting the car together that one of the wires, the open wires, that's the connector for the fog lamp, not headlight, fog lamp. So I won't be able to fix that right now, uh, but at the very least I will be able to get the car washed and taken care of and listed for sale. Some radio music. I gotta check out the speakers. They went great, but radio button is missing, so I'll see if I could order one on Amazon and get it delivered in a day or two. All right, let's do the leak test. Make sure nothing is leaking. I think we are good. I think this was such an easy fix with a check engine. Uh, that was pretty much the only thing I was really stressed about aside from when I first got it. And it had the kind of knocking sound. So my plan right now is uh, clearly after the car wash, take pictures of it. Uh, but I think tomorrow I'll fill it up all the way, a full tank of gas because I have 56 miles left on this one. And I'm gonna put some injector cleaner, run the car through that, and then I'll drive it for a few days, take it through DEQ, and if it sells before that, then fantastic. If it doesn't, then the new buyer will have a DEQ slip, and they will be able to go straight to the DMV and get it titled and registered. You have made it to the end of the video. Congratulations, and thank you for sticking around for this super long video. Since you have made it this far, I will kind of go through the pictures that I took of the car um, so you guys could see what it kind of looks like, the final product, um, and go through the cost. So this is a 2008 BMW 528i. I bought it with just under 107,000 miles. That's the VIN number. You guys are welcome to pause the video and run through that. Let me go back to the... Here we are. So, uh, the purchase price, uh, let me find it again. I have two screens. You guys are only seeing one. So, the winning price was $1,900. After fees, the total was $2,338. Uh, I paid $200 to ship the car to my house. I paid $200 for the headlight, but because the brackets were broken, I got refunded $50, so the headlight came out to be $150. The front bumper was $320 plus $130 in paint, and then I bought two sensors. One was literally the sensor, and then I realized I need the connector with the wiring, and that one was $16, uh, well, $4 and $16. So. The total I spent was $20 on the sensors, which brings the total for this car at $3,158. And I want to point out, look at the engine bay. It just looks spotless. Did a pretty good job. I'm happy with myself. But this video was very long. I realized that. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Please let me know if you like this style of video, if you guys want to see more videos like this one. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and joining this journey.